Ten family. Here I am reporting from my house. Obviously, we are not in the classroom um, until we know we're not going back until possibly April 6th, which means we have two more weeks of distant learning. What is distant learning, you might ask? Truthfully, we have not been trained on this as teachers. I know my parents you and family members, you have have not been trained on this either. We are being patient. We are figuring this out together. My goal is for your child and your household to feel that they are still getting the resources they need to be successful. The last thing that I want is for families to be overwhelmed, stressed, and worried about completing assignments by a certain time and whatnot. It is my job to provide your family with all the resources that they need. I have to give you guys everything that I would be giving you in a normal six hour day. To my knowledge, we are supposed to be working from 8 to 3.30 every day. So your child is supposed to be, quote unquote, reporting for school, either online or through a packet that will be sent to you through Providence Public Schools within that time frame. They do receive a break between 11 to 1, so a two-hour break, which would cover technically lunch, recess, and a special. So normally they would have gym, art, library, music, health. So granted, your child needs to be available at those times to be completing some type of schoolwork. My first and foremost, my advice would be, Get on to Lexia every day for at least 20 minutes and Dreambox every day for 20 minutes. I can log on and see who's been on that and, and track that information and, and make sure your child's getting credit for doing that. I know some parents have already reached out to me saying they're having some difficulty logging into Lexia and Dreambox. They can also log in through Clever, which is a site we use in the classroom. That site is linked to their Google email account. This is where things get kind of funky. Every child has their own Gmail account through Providence Public Schools, and it starts with the letter S, and then it will be their ID number, which is like usually like a seven-digit number, and it's at providenceschools.org. I can try to assist you in logging into Clever through their Google account. I have a whole list of every child's student ID number and their Google account. I don't know how tech savvy everyone here is. I don't know your access to Wi-Fi. I don't know your access to technology. I know older students in grades three through five are getting Chromebooks. I believe grades K to two should be getting access to some type of Chromebook. I'm not positive on that, so please don't quote me. Um, this is where it gets tricky. I know Cox Internet is offering at least free internet to families during this time because they know how much learning will be online, you can always reach out and, and look for that outlet. Clearly libraries are not open, clearly technology can be wishy-washy and not always work. So if the district is sending out packets, wonderful, have your child work on those. I know the 12 students who were in my classroom last Friday, which was, let me just double check, I want to make sure I'm giving you correct information, March 13th, I had 12 students in. Those students went home with packets, Lexia and Dreambox um, login sheets, information. The students who did not come in, which should be, I believe, 10 of them, I had their sheets and login information, a paper copy and an online copy with me. So you can reach out to me for that. Most importantly, the district wants us to give you a phone number. It's not technically my real phone number, but if you call this number, it will link to my phone, I can pick it up, answer any questions you have, communicate with you privately between you and I. So, you know, if you have concerns about your individual child, you don't want to post in Google Classroom or Facebook, whatever route I'm going through, you can call that number. So that number is 401-287-4019. I'm gonna display it, but I don't know if it will come up backwards for you. 401 
4019. If you call that number, I'd be happy to answer you. Technically, I'm supposed to be working from 8 to 3.30 with that break from 11 to 1. If for some reason you call from 11 to 1, I don't answer. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I do have a brand new puppy. I may be on a quick walk, but then I'll be home and be able to get back to you, certainly. I have to be honest with you. I'm being patient. We're all nervous, and we're all trying to work together to make things good for families and students and also for teachers because we haven't been trained on this and you haven't been trained on this. So it's really my duty and due diligence to make sure that I'm communicating with every family. If I am reaching out to you individually asking about your child, I am hoping to get a response because obviously I care about your child. I care about their academic learning and them as an individual. And it's so important for families and teachers to have an open line of communication. I know it's a frustrating time for many. I know for some of you, you may be out of work. Some of you, you may be working overtime depending on what field you're working in. So I understand that, you know, the child who's in my classroom may not be your only child. And you could have one, two, four, five, even more children in your home or other family members, and it can be chaotic. So my advice to you, if possible, please try to set up some type of little workstation for your child if you can. It doesn't have to be obviously a desk, but if you have a little counter space or a little table, whatever it may be, try to find them a spot. I sent students home Friday with pencils and whatnot. I know not everyone has access to crayons, glue sticks, and scissors. If you do have access to that, wonderful. What I would like students to have access to is a pencil, an eraser, plain paper. If you have those extra items or materials, wonderful. Keep them close by so students can use them. I am navigating this the best way I can. I'm trying to be patient and calm so that I can give those wonderful vibes to you and your family and we can work together in this journey. My email is also Alana, A-L-A-N-A, -A, period, Davis, D-A-V-I-S, at ppsd.org. Um, it was not working for a few days, but I got it up and running, so you're more than welcome to email me there at any time. Uh, I do have Kinvo. That's also the email displayed there. Um, I have Kinvo. I've messaged lots of you through Kinvo. Some people have turned messages off or are having difficulty communicating that way. If not, email, call the phone number. I still have Class Dojo for messaging and posting things. I'm working on creating a Facebook group to have parents join or family members join if they want to without having me technically being your Facebook friend. I don't want you to feel that I'm invading your personal privacy, but I could post some updates on there and, and have kind of like a forum for families to chat with one another if necessary. And that's about it. All I want to say is I appreciate everything that you do for the child who's in your house. I miss each of these children dearly, and I'm hoping we're back sooner rather than later, but I'm preparing for the worst and going to be ready no matter what to give your child everything that they need. So please do not hesitate to contact me if you need anything. Thank you, and I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Thanks. Bye.